Well, it's December 21, and uh, my wife and I are spending a few days on the Oregon coast. And I'm sure many of you have spent the kind of winter day we are on the Oregon coast because I look out the window, it is stormy and rainy and windy. And I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, I would normally, right before Christmas, uh, do something relatively light, wishing people a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or a Happy Hanukkah, whatever you might be celebrating. But I think this maybe is an opportunity for me to talk about what I'm going to call the ultimate podcast. Now, that's a term without the word podcast so I've been using for decades. When we introduced the ultimate buy and hold strategy, must have been over 20 years ago now. And um, why was it called the ultimate buy and hold strategy? not because it was able to see into the future and know what it would do for you in the future, but rather to say, given all that we know about the past, without taking the risk of having all the money on one company or, or one mutual fund or, or one asset class, in fact, it was a strategy, as I think most of you know, that is diversified over many different equity asset classes and truly has probably been the most impactful piece of work that we have done uh, over the years uh, when I was an investment advisor and we have carried on that tradition here at the Merriman Financial Education Foundation but rather than as an advisor, simply as a teacher. And so that's one time when I used that word ultimate, but I moved right along and I found another ultimate and that ultimate was about the fine tuning table because it was the best way I knew to be able to help investors determine not just the possible return you might get over a long period of time, but to take a real close look at what the risk is during the worst of times of any particular combination of equity and fixed income. And over the years, we've expanded that to not just be about the S&P 500 and the ultimate buy and hold strategy, but also strategies that are all value or strategies that are 70-30 U.S. international rather than 50-50. So we've done a lot of work with that ultimate fine-tuning your asset allocation uh, presentation. And we went on to the ultimate distribution strategy, taking you through the the fixed strategy, and then finally into the variable strategy that um, when I say for my money, I really mean for, for my money or our money. Uh, we use a strategy that protects me on the way down and still gives us a chance to celebrate the life's accomplishments financially on the way up. And then Chris Patterson comes along and Chris Patterson develops the two funds for life. Well, this was obviously an opportunity for me to use the word ultimate again, because now I could talk about the ultimate strategy for a young investor, that opportunity to create a strategy that that gave them most of what the ultimate buy and hold strategy did, but without having to do it with so many different uh, funds or asset classes. But this today, the ultimate strategy, I'm, or the ultimate thing I'm talking about today, is really not about you, and it is not about me. 
It is not about how we manage our money to maximize the return, but it is uh, what I will call the ultimate thing that I know, and along with the help of Rich Buck, to help first-time investors get it right, get headed in the direction of success in each step you take in that investing process. And that's, of course, what we're talking millions, 12 simple ways to supercharge your retirement is about the new book. And I want to thank the people who purchased the book. As you know, all the proceeds go to the, uh, to the foundation, other than what uh, Amazon keeps for themselves. Uh, and, uh, and of course, not only have many of you purchased it, but we made it available free to all of our newsletter subscribers. Now, I don't know if I told you this before, but uh, the truth is I wanted it to be free for everybody right out of the gate. Just give it away to anybody who, who could breathe. And the folks with the foundation said, wait a minute, uh, wouldn't you like to have some of those profits go to, 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 to help underwrite the work that we're doing here in the coming years? So I, we compromised. We decided that we would charge for it uh, at Amazon, um, either as a Kindle or as a softbound version. And soon to be, by the way, soon to be audio read by Don McDonald, a dear friend and a man with a terrific voice and a love of the investment process. So I know it's going to be good. And then in the compromise, not only do we make a few dollars selling them, but the deal is that for students and teachers, those eBooks will be free. And I'm at work right now talk, talking to teachers and students even uh, across the country about how we can use that book and make presentations to groups of students. In fact, I don't know how many of these I'll be able to do, but I'm saying yes to a lot of people who are asking me if I would teach a class at a high school or at a university. And the word is absolutely. I can't do it every day, but I can do it enough to get to a lot of folks. And there again, we'll have that book to leave behind because everybody will have a link to that, that PDF. Now, some people who purchased the book chose not to download the book when it became available at no cost because they already owned the book. But the fact is that free book is so that after you've purchased a book, although you don't have to, but you've had access to that free book so that you can turn right around and fire it forward in an email because it's a PDF. Once you have it, anybody you get it to can read it and you can share it with others uh, in your family. One fellow sent it to 50 of his old Marine buddies. Well, I don't know if they're old Marine buddies, but Marine buddies, as well as his kids. So that's what I'm hoping that free book is going to do. It's going to somehow go viral. I don't know how to make a book go viral. I don't even know how many copies it takes to be called viral, but I know this, I do want to get that book into the hands of as many people as we possibly can, which is what I'm talking about here today. I, I wanna make a point about that book and you helping other people with their investment decisions. There's one thing I really feel that young people do not get a taste of, enough of, uh, and that is that how 
hugely impactful. Making these decisions right can be over a lifetime. I just closed uh, before I came on, uh, uh, I think it's mymoney.gov. And through mymoney.gov, you can go to a whole bunch of information about mutual funds. And I went to a section on, and by the way, not just mutual funds, investing in stocks and bonds and uh, limited partnerships, all sorts of things. And the purpose is to give an investor the basic information that they need to move forward. And they're constantly warning people, you need to understand this because if you don't, you're likely to be taken advantage of. And they talk about low expenses, just as we talk about low expenses. They talk about the importance of tax efficiency, just as we talk about it. There is nothing new in that statement that lower expenses are likely to lead to a higher return. You can get that for free all over the internet. What Rich and I tried to do in this book and why we talk about we're talking millions, and I know that sounds like we're all, all hyped up and overselling, but we're not overselling. We are trying to tell these young people the truth, that when those lower expenses are a half or even 1% lower then you need to pay in order to get what you're going to get, not just for the next year, but maybe for the next 30 or 40 or 50 years. That that extra half a percent or 1% is literally worth millions. This, this is so valuable that if it took you a whole hour out of your life to really dig into expenses and understand all the way that, that, that the industry will try to get a piece of your hide and you do what you have to, to, to keep from doing that, that one hour could be worth literally millions. If it takes one hour or two hours to understand why wanting to put all of your money into something safe like bonds or annuities when you're in your 20s and your 30s is likely costing you millions, millions in returns over a lifetime. And by the way, if you're doing this right and you have kids and they learn to do the same right things you've learned to do, you have... You have taken that two hours to figure out, not just for your lifetime, but possibly for generations. Ben Franklin says, an investment in knowledge pays the greatest interest. They didn't think about capital gains then or dividends. They thought in terms of interest, but it's the same thing. The big payoff comes from understanding. And we didn't want to bury these decisions in a book that has 50 or 100. We had a book like that. We called it 101 Investment Decisions Guaranteed to Change Your Financial Future. These 12 are in there. But they're buried amongst 101 of those, and some of those 101 will only make you $1,000, and others will make you a million. So we wanted to separate out the precious few. Now, I don't know if we made it entertaining reading. I will tell you that the, that the reviews we're getting at, at Amazon are excellent. Now, to be fair... Most of those reviews are coming from people who know our work inside out, and they know what's the best of what we have to offer. And so when they say good things about the book, I sometimes think, well, maybe they're talking about all that stuff that Daryl and Chris and the whole gang are putting together to try to help. 
In fact, in a couple of cases, people even mentioned Daryl and Chris. So it, it isn't just about the book. I think it's about what we as an organization are trying to do. So when I say this is an ultimate podcast, this is a, an, an ultimate ask. I will tell you that I will promise to do all that I can to show you the ways I can find to do better or the things that we should know that will help us stay the course when things get really tough. And by the way, a lot of you have stepped forward and you have done a, a, a wonderful thing in donating to our foundation. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate every one of those donations. One was for $5 and one was for $2,500. And it's all helpful and going to, to support us as we move forward over the next year, working on some, some I think, some, some great projects that are gonna, you're going to like. I've, I've looked at the research already. I know what's coming, and I think you're going to like it. But this ask is not about money. It is about your cleverness, your experience, and then just the desire to try to help others, and that is, I want to figure out, and at this point, I'm a little bit hamstrung, I want to figure out how to get this book into the hands of as many people as possible, and I do know at this point I have the right, based on the agreement I've made with the people I work with, that yes, we'll keep it for sale at Amazon, not everybody can get a free copy if they want one, but I do know teachers can. And I do know that, that students can. And I do know that you, as one of our subscribers, you have access to that, that PDF, and you can pass it on to others. I tried to figure out how to create a chain letter Gosh, I remember when I think probably when I was in high school, they were popular. And uh, uh, I, I believe they're illegal when they have to do with money. But somehow I would like to figure out how to get to this as, as to as many people as possible. And I suspect many of you are game to help. You just probably haven't figured out how to maximize that effort. And I think it is not just a, a matter of sending it to your children and to your friends, but asking if they would send it along uh, to others. You know there's not one penny in this for me, but uh, I don't know how many pennies it takes to equate to a million dollars, but I do think, well, actually I do, but I do think that, uh, uh, that there'd be a lot of people who are going to be able to leverage that book, that simple book, into extra millions. Let's remember, I know this, this just sounds fishy as can be, that at $5,000 a year over 40 years, getting putting your money into the right kinds of investments, but making that decision, stocks versus bonds, there is over a 5% difference in return, certainly now or over the last years. But even going back to 1926, it's about a 5% difference between long bonds, treasuries, and the S&P 500. And that extra 5%, if you invested $5,000 a year for 40 years, didn't ever increase it. You might have done something with other money, but that 5000 a year, that was going into the S&P 500. 
over your lifetime in money that would be sent to you to live on in, in, in retirement if you live to be 90 or 95 years old and what you leave to your children and charities at the end of your life, the difference should be close to $10 million. Just with that $5,000 a year. And even though that may be chump change because of inflation, it'll be a lot better to have that extra $10 million than to have what you would have if you put all your money in bonds over that period of time. You have to think about what the definition is of safe and for how long. We need... We need our young people to understand that stocks are very risky in the short term, but over the long term, when we look at the very best of returns and the worst of returns over a 40-year period and see that the worst 40-year compound rate of return was 8.9% and the best was 12.5% for the S&P 500. And you would have made much, much less. As, as a matter of fact, after inflation, with the really safe government paper, you make less than 1% a year over the last 90 plus years. So these are things. In fact, as I sit here preaching, I feel like I wish... I wish I could do this with you sitting with your young adult children and we could have a talk with them and see if we couldn't get them to, to, uh, to listen to what we have to say just for a few minutes and then give them the link to that book in the hopes that that conversation that we would have for a few minutes would motivate them to take the time to get that education that can be leveraged to make more money, if all that matters is money, make more money than they'll probably ever make anywhere else by the hour during their whole lifetime. Because literally, if I had your kids for 10 hours and we could show them how to make an extra $10 million, wouldn't that be a million an hour if everything everything after that could be put on automatic i think of the possibilities so we're extending the access to the free to all the newsletter folks and you podcast folks maybe some of you are not newsletter people and you've only been with us through the podcasts Okay, do me a favor. Just go over long enough to sign up for the newsletter. Steal that link. Get it and then put it to work and then cancel the newsletter. That's okay with me. And uh, let's see if we can't save some financial souls here for the long term. I am going to uh, next week talk about the lessons I've learned uh, over the last year. And some of them I've learned from Daryl and from Chris. And I'm hoping that they'll join me for that, uh, that presentation. Now, they may be busy. It is a busy week next week. But uh, they've been responsible for so much of uh, the new information that you're learning about that I would, I would feel better to have somebody there who I know knows what they're talking about. And, uh, and to talk about what we've learned from this market. Uh, there are some very valuable lessons. The, I'm, I'm always looking for lessons of perspective, the kinds of things that give us the ability to stay the course with whatever investment that we, we might make. Uh, I am amazed how many people give up so early, so fast, 
because things didn't go their way. Well, they were never designed to go their way if their way means it's going to be profitable right out of the gate and uh, and you shouldn't have to ever worry about a little a little pain in the process. No, there's going to be pain in the process. So I hope you will join me next week as we talk about those lessons. And if I do get Daryl and Chris there with me, we're going to talk about what they're up to for next year. And uh, hopefully you'll be as excited as I am. Uh, but I do, I do want to close this presentation, um, thanking each and every one of you for, for, for being there. Uh, if you weren't there, this would be a, a, a thankless job. But I know even from the things that you, the emails you send me, and not just about me, they're about Chris, and they're about the Daryl, and they're about Rich, and behind us, you, you've got Margie and Asia. You, you've got Jen and, and, and uh, uh, a group of people who are trying to serve you as best they can. And recently, under ne not underneath the uh, easiest of conditions, particularly poor Asia over in Spain, because uh, uh, they tightened things down real tight there. And it was could hardly leave your house for a while. So, uh, so I want to thank them. I want to thank you. Again, I want to thank you for your 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 generous contributions. Um, I never know when somebody gives us twenty five dollars or a thousand dollars, what part of your wealth that is. But I can tell you, whatever you leave in the hands uh, of this foundation. We're going to put it to work doing what the kinds of things I think you would like to see done. In the meantime, I know some of you simply want the information to take care of you. And that is we're, we're caring for you and we're caring for the next generation. So uh, thank you all. And I do appreciate the emails. And of course, what this whole podcast is about is sharing with others. And I know already many of you, I have no idea how many, are telling friends and neighbors and children and whatnot to, to, uh, uh, to, to, to look into this. Again, my hope is when you, when you give them the link, the PDF to this book, it's organized, so they don't have to go to a website that isn't as organized, and we are aware it needs work, which is why one of the things we're going to do next year is make our website easier for people to use. But that, that book, I hope, will make it very clear the things that they need to do, even if they never, ever go to our website. That book as a standalone publication, I hope, will send them to do what they need to do. So I hope your holidays are, are wonderful. Uh, it's a sad time in this country, but boy, it looks like there's, there's hope. And uh, that 2021 could be a year we can truly uh, celebrate. Uh, with some major steps forward. All the best to you and to your family. And join us next week because we're going to have some, we're going to have some fun and some great information. <music>